So, but we still keep supporting the academic basic research because you need that. You need that to support what you do in the development. But industrial development has to be structured day one from industrial purpose so you don't have any surprises when you bring it to the big giant companies. But part of all this, like Ulf said about the value chain, it's very important that you tie up, not with a giant company to start with, but with a cutting edge partner. Someone like this uh, Formula One company who have expertise in one particular area which you need, you bring him into the project, then the giant companies start to listen. Mm, these guys know what they're doing, they are serious. So that's what we're doing. We have some excellent collaboration with companies like that. We already have some agreements with excellent giant companies like that. And of course, before we do all this, we look into the market. Is there a market need for the product? In the uh, virtual support organization, as you see, it's uh, something called ICON. It's a worldwide leading consulting organization with offices all over the world, 7,000 employees. They have put a senior management group to help us evaluate new projects. They do it free of charge because they're part of the development program. So we go back to the Bombardier Beetle. And <clears throat> as a fringe benefit coming out of it, this is a green technology. And um, I was not sure if the video was going to work, so I put together some slides here about just the Bombardier Beetle. But here you have a scientist with an idea, and they start to speculate in their idea, and they will speculate about the Bombardier's control valve system was the use for, for the basis to start up. And they, they had some work together with the Cornell University. And you saw the vapor explosion coming out of that and the droplet size. That was the starting point. So they built a rig. And not that I understand it, but they built a rig to do the first experiments. It was supported by my company. They start then to do CFD modeling to see how the Bombardier Beetle's vapor valve system was working. And they then, based upon all this, they come up to some IP, which I can't go too much in detail, some ideas. But the outcome was that the improved fuel burning is achieved through the generation of smaller droplet size and the injector operating at low pressures. And that has a significant environmental um, um, impact. And as this, uh, te this technology in this particular area has gained maximum interest, and we'll come back to that. This research council in UK, they score research they, which they have, uh, they value the research which they have supported. And this gave a strike outstanding, outstanding, outstanding. Because we did it from industrial standard from day one. So here you have just some few applications. It's mind boggling. You have the fuel injector all green technology, you have all aerosol star, 11 billion aerosols manufacturers per year. You have all inhalations, drug inhalers. You have needless injectors. You have fire systems in spacecrafts. In this building, that you have, look at them and you see what they contain. All of these contain um, propane butane, some of them propane butane, some of them other type of, of, of driving propellants. Mic Micromist doesn't contain that. It's green technology. Plus it's te te technically advanced. So we got the grant from, from the UK Foundation to go forward with the fuel injector program. It's full swing just now, since uh, August last year. Uh, we are working with uh, companies in this particular area Think about an aerosol, which developed 1948, 43. That's the technology which are today in our, all aerosols. Look at this. Look at the, uh, desk, the inhaler, desk inhaler in a doctor's office. If you have a child who has to go in there with asthma, you should be frightened to see this sewing machine. There's a need for designs, and there's a need for new technologies. Fire systems. In, in the buildings, societies, there is a need for new sprinkler systems. So, to finish off, 
I call it the biomimetics innovation bazaar. I don't think the problem for any one of us who are coming from the industry, the problem is not to find biomimetic ap a, a projects. The, that is, you go to Japan, you go to Australia, you go to New Zealand, every university has a biomimetic opportunity. The problem is, or the opportunity is to spot what is going to take it to the marketplace. And I'm driven by the social responsibility to bring revolutionary product to the marketplace. So we have, my company work currently with two platform technology. One is Micromist, based on the Bombardier Beetle. The other one is, is called Microlot. It's a new system which is going to revolutionize the way pharmaceutical industry today research, develop, and manufacture pharmaceuticals. And it's based upon the most basic um, uh, nature, it's based upon this inspiration from the RNA transcription into certain areas. So these two technologies could keep me occupied for the rest of my life. But still, universities now come to, come to our company and say, hey, we have 32 technologies. We have all these spin-out companies. We have all these companies working with us. We don't get anywhere. Please review them. Can you come up with a sanity check? Which should we start with? Which shouldn't we start with? So we have a co company has a group of people, evaluate them, come up with recommendations. So we think this, this acceleration model is nothing science fiction. It's very common sense. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lachine. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I, I know that uh, we have one bag over here that belongs to one speaker. And we're very curious about the content of it. But I know that you have something in your bag as well. You showed us before the real thing. Or you have it over there. Sometimes when you sit in the meetings, uh, people forget. I have to say, I've been a chairman of a football club for a couple of years. And when I became a chairman, everyone talked about anything else uh, than about the team, how the team was playing and how they were feeling and uh, their success rate. It was all administration. And, and when you work with innovations, you have to talk with people so they understand. So here we have, here we have a spray, nothing strange about that. But look at what it contains and how it's driven, etc. There's a room for improvement. This is a fuel injector. Very simple. Is that uh, the solution that you have from the bug? Yeah, we are working on, on that currently, yes. All right. Yeah, this is not coming out from us. This is a, an inhaler. Just to illustrate what, why what's driving me, driven, driving me is to see this on the market. With new technology, with greener. new technology, bio-inspired. Yes. Yes. Do you have a beetle with you? Do you have a beetle uh, in your bag? Have you seen a real beetle? Because yeah. they are living next to you. <laughs> <laughs> in, in in California. Oh, no, I seen no. That. Yeah. Okay. I'm May I just? <laughs> yes, I've seen it. Coming back to the value chain and what Ulf Carlson was uh, talking about earlier, what what step do you find is most difficult in the value chain? <clears throat> to get <clears throat> to get a scientist, this is a very multidisciplinary area. You need physicists, like you, mathematicians. You need even the designers to work together, and that takes time, and you have to be patient and you have to work 24 hours with that. That is the biggest challenge. I think everyone, everyone can work with this model and do whatever, but just to have what you call in English, I don't, uncanny, to have an uncanny ability to have people to work together, that's a, sh that's a challenge. So one of the first steps then, to get the scientists together with the With designers. the industry and uh, just for scientists to go to see the giant company, General Motors, for instance, is, mm -hmm. must be a harassment. And, for, and <laughs> if you go to the big banks, mm -hmm. they don't know how to go talk with the scientists because mm -hmm. they don't have the expertise. So it's the language problem again? I wouldn't say that. I see it as an opportunity, not a problem. Great. Thank you, Lachino. <laughs> Thank you. I Thank think. You. Um, I think it's, we, we just need...